How's it going, everybody? How you doing? I'm here to bring you this week's books and games and keychains and action figures and magazines and omnibibbles and a general friendship and love. Uh, what are you guys up to? Um, I see that someone is here. Do you want to say hello, someone? I just made myself some coffee, and I put eggnog in it instead of cream, so I'm, I'm pretty fancy. Uh. Action figure expert, what's up, son? Hello, hello, hello. Miss you, JD. How you doing? I'm doing great. Today is a good day. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling snappy. I'm feeling sassy. And, uh, oh, my cat is at the vet. Oh, you're gone. <laughs> it went from one to zero. Does that, was that accurate? Are you not there anymore? Um, my cat is, uh, getting her teeth cleaned. I dropped her off yesterday. She had three molars removed. Uh, so they had to keep her overnight. Poor little, poor little biscuit. I feel so bad for her. But yeah, she just had three molars removed, and uh, I have to leave here around 3 o'clock to go pick up said cat. So yeah, I feel bad for her. What a, what a sweet little thing. Uh, Christopher Goodnight, what's up with there being nothing coming in the month of March? I don't... What are, what are you referencing, Christopher? There's nothing coming with regard to what? Oh, sorry, action figure expert. Um, also, action figure expert, so I don't have to call you action figure expert every single time, uh, what's your name? Because if you've told me, I've forgotten it. A-F-E. Aif. Yeah, nothing coming in March with, what are you talking about? Comics? Uh, movies? Uh, television? Meals? I don't know what you... I got some pretty cool stuff coming in uh, this week. I'm very excited about one big surprise that I wasn't sure about. Other than Future State, I have one book this week. Um, yeah, sorry. You need to be reading more books. That's your fault. It's not the comic industry's fault. There's plenty of stuff coming out this week, brother. I don't know what you're talking about. Like I have eight books coming out in March. Yeah, sorry, you got to read more books. There's plenty of stuff. All right, so uh, I did get some more The Last Ronin number one back in. I know people are knocking down the doors for this one still, so if you still need a copy of this, let me know. Uh, I can definitely mail you one, or you could come pick it up at my shop. So I just wanted to point that out. Also, a couple, last time I did my live stream, my unboxing videos, which I guess is a misnomer because I've already unboxed them and they're just in stacks now, but whatever. Um... There were some things that came out last week after my video, my live stream, so I didn't wasn't able to show it because my delivery came a little bit late. One of those things being the Avengers Age of Khonshu trade paperback, which is the newest uh, Avengers trade paperback from Jason Aaron's run, where Moon Knight takes on the entirety of the Avengers team. So that came in. Marvel Select Edition Hey, It's Deadpool... Nice little hardcover. Um, the earliest sagas of the Merc with a Mouth. Let's see. Deadpool with sidekick Weasel in tow sets out on a quest for romance, money, and mayhem. Not necessarily in that order. Only to learn he's being hunted by an enemy he killed years before. Collecting New Mutants 98, Deadpool The Circle Chase 1 through 4, Deadpool 1994 1 through 4, and Deadpool 97 number 1. Um... Sorry, someone just walked in somehow. Hi. Hi, we're closed. That's okay. Uh, is it coming in here? Interesting? Yes. Go for it. Sure, I'm in the middle of a live stream. Give me a second. Sorry. No worries. The door is supposed to be locked. I don't know why it wasn't. I'll be right back, guys. I have a customer. Uh, JD will be right back. There he goes. Look 
Dude, I read a ton of books. I'm spending about $100 a month or so in March. I have three image books, one Vault and four Marvel. No clue what I have coming from DC because they like to be mysterious. Yeah, it's really frustrating that DC doesn't have a printable previews like literally every other comic company does. That's what happens when you leave Diamond, I guess. Um, Chris, I think if you look up DC, what is that thing called? DC, they, not Spotlight. They have a DC Direct? No. Anyway, DC does have a magazine, but it's digital only. And they usually put it, DC Connect. It's DC Connect. So if you're looking for what DC has coming up, Google DC Connect issues, and you should, you should be able to find links for the digital versions of those. But yeah, they should have something that I can hand to people with descriptions of their books that are coming out in the next couple of months, like, like Marvel does, an image. What else are you looking for? Uh, you got any Doctor Strange comics? Comics or trade Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I had a customer. Even though I'm closed, uh, I usually open up if someone stops by so that um, they can get whatever they need. So let's see. Let me catch up on some comments here. Uh, according to my pull list, I only have 13 from everyone but DC this month, 15 in February and 8 in March. I can always grab stuff off the shelf that I hear about on Twitter or Facebook. Mm, 13 from everyone but DC this month. Hmm. Oh, I, I left my coffee up front. All right, let's do this. Ah, hello, everyone else. Oh, before we get started, again... Tonight is book club, and we are doing a book by Carmen Maria Machado. It is a DC graphic novel. 
that was put out as part of the Hill House imprint that was um, spearheaded by Joe Hill, the horror writer. And this is a horror graphic novel called The Low, Low Woods by Carmen Maria Machado, who is a horror novelist who lives in Philadelphia. And she did a really interesting short story book called Her Body and Other Parties that I really liked. And so tonight at 8 o'clock on Zoom, we will be talking about The Low, Low Woods. And um, book club is every other Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on Zoom. And then the alternating Tuesday nights are book club. No, movie club. Sorry. Movie club, book club, movie club, book club. Doodly, doodly, do. Hey, don't let the live stream hold you back from making a sale. Yeah, man. I did. I didn't. I, I went and I saw I, you bought a bunch of Future State stuff and a Doctor Strange, Donny Cates trade paperback, which I still have to catch up on. I love Donny Cates, but I did not read his Doctor Strange. Molly, what's up, Molly? Did you get Scout's Honor from Aftershock? Nope. It's pretty dope. I woke up and saw the live stream Sunday and turned it back off because you were reviewing the new Star Wars book and I haven't read it. Hmm. Well, luckily it's still up there. You can still, after you read it, you can go up and revisit the live stream. I'm reading the hard, yeah, I'm reading the hardcover book too. Uh, very slowly, just because I have so much to read. And I am, I am a, uh, what's the word? I am a slave to my whims. Like, I want to be reading the Star Wars book more often, but then I'm like, oh, but I'm reading this She-Hulk omnibus. Let me read an issue of that. Oh, I have to read this book club book. Oh, I have to play Spider-Man, the video game. Uh, hello, Callie Lev. What up? All right. So, oh, another thing that came in last week that I didn't get the chance to show you is the X-Men Chris Claremont and Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri omnibus. It's a big old boy. And uh, let's see, collecting Uncanny X-Men 244 through 269, plus the X-Men Annual number 13 and Classic X-Men number 39. And th this was the big, the big book when I was growing up and starting to read comics. So a lot of Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri stuff. This is where Jim Lee got really, really popular and uh, eventually became a household name. So yeah, it's all in one big omnibus. And then, you know, they did so well that Chris Claremont and Jim Lee rebooted X-Men with new number one. And I believe that, that I want to say that that is still the highest selling single issue of comics. Marvel Comics anyway. Hey, our Lunar. Good morning. What's up? Oh, my JD will be right back banner is still up. It's, he's back. Spoiler alert. I'm here. And let's see. Oh, here's, here's something cute. It is Mini Co. Figures, Special Edition, Limited Run, Previews Exclusive, Limited to 1,500. Little Stan Lee sitting in a, little, in a little director's chair with his signature on it. Look how friggin' cute that is. Ah, It's adorable. Um, hey, Carol. How's it going? I got to work on lowering my voice. Hey, Carol. Listen. <clears throat> Hi, Carol. How's it going? Uh, every time I'm on the phone with anybody who doesn't know me personally, they call me ma'am. Every time. Every time I'm ma'am. Which is fine, but gets a little frustrating after so long. I gotta work on talking deeper. Uh, swear to me! Yeah, I just started Mistborn so I could binge a podcast and I have to read the first Harry Dresden for another pad podcast. I don't know Mistborn, never heard of it. Uh, all right. Promised Neverland, number 18. Comes out this week, little manga. And My Hero Academia, number 26, volume 26, My Hero Academia. And ooh, 47 Ronin by Stan Sakai and Mike Richardson. A retelling of the classic story, 47 Ronin. 
Japan's enduring national legend comes to comics. Creators Mike Richardson of Crimson Empire from Star Wars and Stan Sakai of Usagi Yojimbo bring history's greatest revenge tale to stirring life under the knowing editorial guidance of Kazu Koiki, Kazu Koiki, famed author of Lone Wolf and Cub. This epic mission of loyal Japanese warriors to avenge their wronged master epitomizes the samurai code of honor, and 47 Ronin recounts the sweeping saga of duty and duress in all its violent grandeur. Opening with the tragic incident that sealed the fate of young Lord Asano, this meticulously researched and beautifully illustrated graphic novel follows a dedicated group of Asano's vassals on their unwavering road to bloody vengeance. This paperback collection of the acclaimed 47 Ronin Limited series includes a two a cover gallery, bonus artwork, and extensive behind-the-scenes extras. I read it. It's great. I love Stan Sakai. Uh, also, not not anything to do with the 47 Ronin movie, I think, starring Keanu Reeves. Okay. Um, I get mammed a lot, especially at the drive-thru. Okay, man. I'm a sir. And again, it doesn't really matter. It's just one of those little things. It's like, oh, stop. Mr. Bourne is from Brando Sando. It's, you're just saying words that I don't understand. All right. Marvel versus Captain Marvel. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ain't that some bull crap? So, all right. This came in damaged. I have to mark this as damaged, then report it. And then hopefully they'll send me a new one. But anyway, it's Marvel vs. Captain Marvel. They have been doing these nice little digest size, well, slightly larger than digest size um, collections. As opposed to... So, yeah. Damaged. And what is in this one? Let's see. Avenging Spider-Man 9 and 10, Captain Marvel 7 and 8, and Generations Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel. All in one little book. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It hurts. I don't like to see it. And we got a couple of reprints. So Department of Truth is an excellent, excellent book. By James Tinney in the fourth and Martin Simmons, I highly recommend Department of Truth, and it deals with fake news, quote unquote fake news, and um, what are they called? Um, conspiracy theories. It's really, really good. Highly recommend it. So yeah, Department of Truth number one, reprint for people who want to check it out. And then I got Ping Pong Manga Volume 1. Yep. Which I like the design of this cover. It's not a sticker. It's just spot varnish printed. It's real nice. Someone had ordered in Volume 2 of this, and I had never heard of it. So generally, if people come in asking for Volume 2, I'll see if I can get in Volume 1. And it looks like it was on back order, but they sent me one. So now I got it. Also, a uh, trade paperback by David F. Walker, The Black Panther Party, a graphic novel history. Oh, ooh, ah, oh, I dropped something. Everything's okay. All right. So, yeah. Black Panther Party, a graphic novel history by David F. Walker. A bold and fascinating graphic novel history of the revolutionary Black Panther Party. And also Angel and Spike, Ring of Fire, Volume 1, from the Buffyverse. And let's see. 
Another reprint, Captain America facsimile edition of issue 354. Where um, Johnny John Walker took over as the Captain America. And then eventually came back as, I think, U.S. agent. This is part of the Mark Grunwald run of Captain America. Uh, let's see. Oh, another reprint crossover from Donny Cates, issue two. This has been an interesting book that I recommend. Um, it's taking a it's it's a slow burn, but it's very interesting. And this is basically what happens in the real world when comic book superheroes just one day appear in the real world, like literal comic book heroes, um, and how that affects the world. So that's pretty cool. Crossover number two by Donny Cates. Also got Fangoria, my favorite horror magazine. I have a couple subscriptions for that. This has been running since 1979. Yep. It's actually the price of the magazine, which is a big deluxe magazine, is actually $19.79 because it was uh, the first year they were in publication was 1979. that there and what else we got oh we got a kids book Batman and Batgirl unite a book about teamwork by Michael Dahl and illustrated by Omar Lozano discover the power of teamwork look how cute that is Are friggin kidding me Get out of here. You're so cute. By the way, I called the reveal in issue three, and you all poo-pooed me. I didn't poo-poo you. That was Noel. So you you called the who that actually was? I didn't see that. I don't remember that. But I don't remember many things. Not the end reveal of the superhero, but the other one. Um, all I remember is the reveal at the end. All right, so from Diamond Comics, distributor, not the publisher, because there isn't one, right? But so everyone's aware, Diamond Comics. Oh, Ben Caldwell, what do you want? Technically part of the industry, but never have it. Yep, 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 yep. Sorry, I'm just chatting with Ben Caldwell. We're just messaging. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to, he's working on a Batman book right now about Carrie Kelly, the Robin from Dark Knight Returns. He's doing a, I think, a 200-page graphic novel, which is going to be hopefully released soon. He's wrapping up work on that. Um, so, yeah, we were chatting about that. Pretty cool. I'm excited about it. All right, so, Autumnal, Autumnal, number four, comes out from Nightfall Comics, which I haven't, I don't think I've read. I don't think I've read a single issue of this. Oh, from Vault. How come it's called? How come? What's it? it says Nightfall on the back, but inside it says Vault Comics. Never mind. I apologize. It's from Vault Comics, not Nightfall Comics, which it says right there for some reason. And then Big Girls from Image Comics by Jason Howard, which is basically about giant, giant women, like really giant women, uh, fighting kaiju. It's a big, crazy, fun series. Is this, uh, is this all of it? Let's see. Issue six. I'm just looking to see if this is the end of it. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. This is it. Issue six. Okay. So I guess it's a miniseries. But, yeah. Big girls. Um, Blade Runner 2029, number two, with a Peach Momoko cover. I really like I think she's supposed to be like like this like ready to pew pew um but it kind of looks like this 
I'm, I'm assuming she's getting ready to pew pew someone else and not pew pew herself. And it's got a, multiple covers. This one is cover D, which is a photograph. And cover C by Claudia Garanfa. Very moody. And then cover B by Sid Maid, Mead. Love all Timonal, says Christopher Goodnight. Oh, is it good? I should read it. I haven't read it. Bleed Them Dry from Vault Comics, a ninja vampire tale with very cool covers. Every cover has been very striking. I like this very much. The gloves are off, the pieces are set, and the sun is rising. It's the final fight. Captain Black backed up by an entire nation of police versus Toyo, an ancient vampire ninja, backed up by Harper Holloway, a disgraced former detective. The only way out is the final death. And we got Buffy number 21, which came out, I think, last week. But this is another copy that I got for someone else. It usually surprises me because it doesn't show up on the previews list or I miss it somehow. Chris, do you, do you have Ultimino on your subscription at your local comic shop? Because even if you miss it, your comic shop won't miss it. Fingers crossed. The lead is very Jessica Jones-esque. I do like Jessica Jones. Chris Claremont anniversary special one shot from Marvel Comics. And it's got a whole whole bunch of people involved like Bill Sienkiewicz, um, Chen, Brett Booth, Sotomayor, Matt Rosenberg, Whole lot, whole lot of people. Hmm. Someone text me. I got a, I got a ba ding on my phone, or my wrist. Randy says, "Hey man, do you have Powers Volume One in stock?" I think there are like seventeen Volume Ones. Are you just looking for the original volume one question mark? Give me a second guys. Looks like all I have uh, volume two through twelve. All right. So for fans of Conan, there is the Sumerian, the Frost Giant's daughter, number two. These are all based on. The original novels. And it has explicit sex and violence. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. It sure, it sure does. Oh, goodness. I'm blushing. Mm. That is explicit. Oh, sure. With Randy, you will get up and disrupt your show. What? Erratic, issue number two of five from AWA Upshot by Kare Andrews. I really, really like the first issue, even though I kind of hate the costume. It, that's, that's neither here nor there. I think the costume is uh, really uh, aggressively designed. But I like Kare Andrews a lot, and I really enjoyed the first issue. So I'm, I'm super curious about uh, the next one. Erratic, it's called. I don't think anyone's really talking about it, but Kari Andrews should be getting more love. He did a really fun Spider-Man 
miniseries called Rain, Spider-Man Rain, R-E-I-G-N, which was basically, for all intents and purposes, Dark Knight Returns, but specifically for Spider-Man. And let's see. What issues are in volumes two through five? The most recent printing, which issues one, no. Um, what issues are in volumes two through five? Volume two starts with issue eight, comma, and volume five takes you through issue... Ah, how is the, oh, I'm, getting a, I'm missing a lot of comments. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, how is the art? Oh, it, dude, it's, if you're talking about Erratic by Kari Andrews, it's friggin' cool. Let's see. I mean, depends on what sort of style you like. But I think it has a heck of a good looking book. Um, So yeah. Uh, also, I have a terminal on my pull list, but I like to go to previews.com and see what's coming each week so I make sure I have the money for everything. Makes sense. How are the articles? Oh, in Sumerian? Or no, I'm sorry, are you asking about erratic lunar? Or are you talking about the Sumerian? The explicit, the very explicit Sumerian. I, I'm trying to find a page. I, the, the art is fantastic. It's very European. Uh, but almost every page of this particular issue has nudity on it. Wait. Okay, I found one. Yeah, the art is freaking sweet, dude. Let's see. Any, another page without nudity? There we go. Yeah, all of these Sumerian books have been absolutely gorgeous. Um, JD, you're so flustered at the raunchy. It's hilarious. Ooh, it's, it's, it has boobies. Mm. That is less important now that I am making more money. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, how is the art in Conan? Thumbs up. All right, Green Hornet number five. By Scott Lobdell. Ooh, he going. Ooh, you better save that baby. That baby gonna get a get a bullet. Ooh. Uh, ha ha, number one from Image Comics. Ha ha, number one, which I believe is a horror book. Written by W. Maxwell Prince with art and cover. Oh, by Vanessa Del Rey. That's cool. So yeah, this is a uh, horror book from the same people who the same people who did Ice Cream Man, I believe. Put through two. Put two through five in my section, please. Thanks, bro. You got it! Exclamation point. Send. All right. Homesick Pilots issue two from Image. I really like the first issue, and basically, uh, it was like, let's write an elevator pitch for a comic that Johnny Destructo specifically will be excited about, and it is uh, a punk rock band and haunted house story, which is right up my alley. Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast, Night City, number five of five. I get one subscriber, and he asks for all of the covers. He's really into these Iron Maiden books. Which is cool. I haven't read any of them. And I don't I don't I don't think I've listened to much Iron Maiden. Alright, the Immortal Hulk number forty-two. 
which, oh my gosh, if you guys didn't read it, there is a single issue that came out last month called King in Black, Immortal Hulk. And it was awesome. There are no words in the book. It's all art. It's all sequential storytelling without any dialogue. It is awesome. And it's kind of heartbreaking and beautiful. It's just, it's really good. It's one of the best issues that came out last year. Kick-Ass versus Hit-Girl number three by Steve Niles. And somebody else. Marcelo Frusen. All right, so there's a couple of King and Black tie-ins that are coming out. King and Black, Gwenum versus Carnage number one by, was that Sean and McGuire? Yeah, Sean and McGuire and Flaviano are the, uh, the team. Gwenum versus Carnage. So for anyone who doesn't know, there's Spider Gwen, and then the Venom version of her is called Gwenum. And this is a tie-in to King and Black. There's also King and Black Thunderbolts number one by Matt Rosenberg and Juan Ferreira. Which I haven't, I don't think I've read a Thunderbolts book in like since Dark Reign. But they're back. I'm excited. And who do we got? We got a symbiote dragon. We've got Taskmaster, Rhino. St oh, Star's in it. I'm in. Star. I like Star. Um, Batroc Zillipar. And this guy. Who's this guy? Not Doctor Doom. Looks almost like the Shroud, but I don't. I don't know who that is. King and Black, Planet of the Symbiotes, number one. With it, this looks like Tony Moore. This is a dope ass cover. Is this Tony Moore? Who's this? Tell me your secrets. Where are the credits? Where are the credits? I'd like to read the credits to this comic book. Um, nope. Oh, it's a friggin', no one's gonna tell me. It's a friggin' secret. Anyway, Planet of the Symbiotes, King in Black. That looks like Tony Moore to me. And then the final King in Black tie-in for this week, The Union, number two, by Paul Grist and, ooh, Andrea DeVito. Nice. The Union, number two, for Queen and Country. Oh, looks like Radioactive Man? Chen Lu? Oh, I don't know who that is. Lonely Receiver from Zach Thompson and Jen Hickman for Mature Readers. This is another horror book. I read the first issue and liked it quite a bit, but I haven't had a chance to catch up with it. But a customer of mine has a subscription to it, and he was talking about it last week, and he was just like, ooh, doggy. It starts off as like kind of a horror book, but then becomes a horror book. So I'll have to check it out when I get a chance. I do like me a horror book. Mighty Morphin, number three. So someone had written in. Uh, I think they either email JD's Hero Complex at gmail.com or cultpopgo at gmail.com for the podcast. And he watches the live streams where I talk about what's coming, what's coming in this week. And he said, you know what you should do with your abundance of time, being sarcastic, is to go through previews on a live stream and sort of go through the things that I'm excited about as I'm doing my previews order. And honestly, I don't know how I would do that. I feel like I would have to have another camera specifically on the stream pointed at the book as I go through it. And I'm not entirely sure how many people, because I got to go page by page. When I'm doing my previews order, I literally go page for page and I see, can I sell this? Will people want this? Do I want to sell this? Am I excited about it? 
And I don't know how to do that. I don't know how I would do a previews live stream. And anyone doesn't know, previews is basically the book I go through in order to order things for my store. And even then, we wouldn't have DC Comics because DC is not part of previews. And then I would have to do a whole separate thing for DC and their digital thing. Maybe better to do a best of previews. Right. So that means I got to go through previews and then do the extra work of marking off things that I'm excited about and then do a live stream with all my extra time. I'm having a baby in a couple of weeks. So maybe I could figure it out. But that's a lot of live stream, live streaming. Uh, there's a lot of extra work that I don't have. I don't even have time. I'm I'm like three episodes behind on the podcast. We do the live stream review show every Sunday morning at eleven or at ten thirty a.m. on the YouTube channel, and uh, I'm supposed to take the audio from that YouTube live stream and then make an audio file and then put it on iTunes for people who only listen to audio shows. And I'm like three or four episodes behind on that because I don't have the time to edit. Uh, episodes anymore. I could pre-flag things. What what was the book you didn't know that guy? The guy you were just talking about. The guy from Thunderbolts. Uh, oh, I can just use my previews list, says Callie. I pick all the good stuff. Man, going through a previews magazine on a live stream will take forever, right? Especially since, I don't, for people who don't know, the previews process for me personally is about eight hours worth of work. It's eight hours of sitting down, going through, looking at all my subscribers, getting the books for the subscribers, then deciding how many books on top of the subscribers I should get in the hopes that I can sell, and then go page by page through the previews and decide what else I want to order on top of that. And it is a grueling just a full eight hour day of just staring at my screen, staring at previews, staring at my screen. And it, I'm real cranky by the end of it. Every, every month there's a day where I'm just super cranky because I've been doing previews nonstop. I want to re-listen to the older posts, but they won't download anymore. Yeah, uh, they were on a different website, on a different server. And that server no longer is there. So I don't know how to fix that. Up, oh, mailman's here. I got some more stuff in the mail. So yeah, um, Christopher, I don't know how to get those those episodes back up. And frankly, no one else seems to care. So it doesn't seem like it's worth the effort. What is this? Oh, I order um, I ordered on Etsy a mask. No, nope, this isn't it. This isn't the this isn't the mask I ordered. But somebody ordered us for our baby. I told you we're having a baby. A little bib from Etsy, I think. Thank you for supporting my small business. It's got Velcro on the top. SK Crafty Corner shipped to Johnny Destructo. That's me. I didn't order this. But it says, the buyer is Johnny Destructo. Oh, is that from Amy? Oh, that's cute. Oh, and uh, Callie, I see your question about pretzels. 
They're not pre I thought they were pretzels at first, too. And I said, oh, hold on a gosh darn minute. I didn't order no pretzels. It's not, it's not pretzels. Uh, uh, let's see, let's open it up. I will tell you that I have been buying um, stuff on eBay and Omnibus Collectors Group because I like omnibuses. Uh, and there's a bunch of stuff that is out of print. And I've also been buying comic book. What is? I hate. I hate. I hate these. I hate these so much. They're the worst. Uh, I gotta dump them into a trash can. Otherwise, they just go everywhere. Goodness gracious. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, styrofoam isn't actually recyclable, right? Didn't we decide that back in the 80s? That like, we weren't allowed to use styrofoam anymore? It was a big thing. And now everything is, everything has styrofoam in it again. Which I don't think is recyclable. Am I crazy? Can I recycle this nonsense? I hate it. Oh, this is what I got. The JSA jo Jeff Johns Omnibus Volume 1. Oh, it's got a dent. Ooh, it's got a dent. That's okay. So yeah, JSA Omnibus. I got a, I got a couple other things in the mail, but I won't subject you to that because I'm sure you don't care. All right, continuing. Uh, let's see. Uh. No pretzels, sorry. Hey, would you like a chocolate-covered pretzel? I get that reference from um, Mallrats. God, I, oh, I used to love that guy, Jason Lee. Ex-skateboarder, ex Jason Lee, turned actor. Um, did I get my missing package? Yes. Yes, I did. The post, the, oh. He keeps dropping stuff through the mail slot. Uh, the post guy. Uh, marked them both as delivered in my mailbox, and um, they weren't. So uh, I got them two days later when he stopped in and was like, oh, sorry about that. I accidentally scanned two packages as delivered, even though I didn't deliver, whatever. Anyway, yes, they eventually showed up. Styrofoam is terrible, says Callie. Matthew, very meta, an unboxing in an unboxing. There are some cellulose-based styrofoam-like products, and those can be dissolved in water. Dissolved in water? But yeah, I think a lot of people are still using the old stuff. And it's really bad because it breaks down into tiny pieces, and it's impossible to pick up, and birds slash fish slash wildlife eat it, and it messes up their digestive systems, right? I hate it. I hate styrofoam so, so much. Awesome styrofoam is not... Oh, it depends on what kind. All right. Marauders number 17... One of my top three X-Men books currently coming out. And there's a different cover, an alternate cover. And it's by Salvador La Roca. And it's an alien cover. Uh, Pantomime number three from Mad Cave Comics. Oh, I got to leave soon to go get my cat. I don't know, for people who weren't here in the beginning, uh, our cat, Beatrix Kiddo, um, she had to have 
three teeth pulled, three molars. So they kept her overnight at the vet. Red mother, number 12. Something horrible is happening there, and I can't quite tell what. Ah, for people who like Terry Moore of Strangers in Paradise and Echo and Rachel Rising, one of the characters from Rachel Rising has her own series just starting called Serial. I love Rachel Rising, oh, which looks like this. If you haven't read Rachel Rising, you can get the softcover omnibus of the entire series for 55 bucks, and I highly recommend it. Thunderbolt's character is Mr. Fear. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Callie, oh no, poor kiddo. Yeah, I feel so bad for her. You can melt styrofoam with gasoline. So what? Do I, so I just what? I put styrofoam like in a bucket, and then I just pour gasoline on it, and it dissolves it. And then what do I do with the gasoline? I don't under I don't get how to do that. I don't have gasoline. Seven Secrets number six from Tom Taylor. And there are a couple of variant covers, both by Jen Bartel. It looks like. If I had to guess, I would say Jen Bartel, of course, because look at those colors. And, oh, it's a joke. Oh. I knew that. And then there's uh, the one per store variant of Jen Bartel. And then Amazing Spider-Man number 57, Last Remains Postmortem by Spencer and Bagley with a nice cover by um, Mark Bagley, with an alternate cover by, ooh, I don't know who this is. And I am, guys, guys, you guys, I am in the 90th percentile of being done the Spider-Man game from, I don't know, 2017, 2018? I'm almost done. I'm, I feel like the next big thing I have to do is the last battle and it has been epic it has been so so good originally i thought it was just going to be a martin lee and possibly dr octavius storyline um and i'm sure it's not a spoiler for anyone else who's not me <laughs> um but yeah like the whole sinister six shows up and it's the first time i think i've ever fought multiple villains in one battle so yesterday i was fighting rhino and scorpion at once and it was awesome it was so good. It's so, so good. Star Wars Darth Vader comes out this week, number nine. And let's see. Oh, Sword, number two. I really, really liked. Uh, hold on a second. What's up? So sword number two, I really like sword number one. So I'm really excited to read sword number two. Oh, and it's a king and... Oh, it doesn't say king and black on it. But it's very clearly a king and black tie-in. Look at that. Um, JB does those lovely, lovely colors. Jen Bartel, yes. It's, it results in a similar, similar substance to napalm. Oh, cool. Just a little something to put in your coffee. All right, so those are the Diamond books. And before I do DC and then get the heck out of here, I am super excited. I didn't know this was going to show up today. I want to do my little dance, and then I'm going to show you. Adventure Zone Bureau of Balance board game came in. I didn't know it was on its way. I ordered it friggin' months ago. And I got a big old box in the mail today, and I'm very excited. I love the Adventure Zone podcast by my brother, my brother, and me, the McElroys. Um, and take that with a grain of salt. Uh, the fact that I've only listened to, I don't know, a couple months worth of the podcast. Because uh, there's too many things to enjoy, and it's hard to keep up. 
but I have grown to love the Adventure Zone podcast. I do it in spurts. So I'll listen for a, for a little bit, uh, and then I'll you know I'll get distracted by the Slash Filmcast or or um, the Halloweenies podcast or something, and then eventually I'll go back and and listen to more episodes. And there's two different there's two different ones. This is the there we go. This is the um, variant box set of the Adventure Zone board game, the limited edition. Oh, I see. This says contents, and then is every is everything different in here? And this is the limited edition contents. So very very cool. And they also sent me these little packs, which I assume go with the limited edition box set. No 3113. Noel is built for healing and hugs. At the end of your turn, you may flip this card. Yavi the Gerblin. Yavi has big plans. What's his current scheme? Do you go along with it? So, yeah. I'm, uh, uh, here's the thing, though. I don't have anyone to play board games with because uh, COVID is a thing. Turns out you're not supposed to get into large groups to play board games. Who knew? So, yeah. Eventually, after, after the now... The terrible now. Uh, we will have board game night, and hopefully, we can get together and play some Adventure Zone. So I'm very excited about. It. I'm tickled. Um, how much are you selling the limited edition board? I don't know. I just got them in. I haven't had a chance to price them out. But I think I've got like four of the uh, the special edition, and like six of the regular edition. So yeah. Anyway, all right. So now we're going to do DC. And then I'm going to get the F out of here and go get my, my doped up cat. Hey, David. All right, so DC Comics, mostly Future State. But there are, there's a, a couple of um, other things, including We Found a Monster by Kirk Scroggs. They wrapped it in this, hold on. They put it in a bag with an absurd amount of tape. Like, like too much tape. It's too, it's, I can't, there isn't, I have to, the, the, the tape, it's like, listen, I'll tell you, it's a lot of tape. Oh, it's, it sticks to everything. Here we go. <sighs> we found a monster. Oh, that's cute. I thought there was an actual hole in it for a second. That's why I did this. And I realized it's just photoshopped on there. It's like a three-hole punch. That's pretty clever. All right. And by that, I mean, are you selling them? Oh, if, no, no. I got a whole box. No, I'm, yeah, they're for sale. I mean, I'm going to keep one for me. But no, yeah, there's a whole box of them. I got a, a case, a case of them. I'd have to check with Alex, but we definitely consider buying them as a gift for our friends. Nice. Uh, love those Wonder Wonder Woman Future State covers. Yeah. Those variants are so good. Chef's kiss. All right. American Vampire 1970. I'm going to lower my voice again. American Vampire 1976. See, it's hard. It's hard for me to lower my voice and have it sound natural. Right? People, how, do, how do people with low voices talk? I don't, I don't know how to do it. My voice is just high. I can't help it. Sweet Tooth, The Return by Jeff Lemire. Jeff, Jeff Lemire. Sweet Tooth, The Return by Jeff Lemire. I have to talk slower. If I'm going to lower my voice, I have to talk slower. But I get excited and my voice goes up and I'm... These books are packed tight. Here we go. Oh, I already read this, and it's great. Future State Dark Detective. Who wrote this? Who friggin' wrote... Oh, of course. Tamaki. Tamaki wrote it. Mariko Tamaki. I am a big Mariko Tamaki fan. And here, here she is again. And it's got art by Dan Mora. This was great. And it deals with Bruce Wayne. The last issue, which was the next Batman, had a different Batman under the cowl. And 
This one deals with Bruce and what happened to Bruce. Yeah, Mariko Tamaki's great, right, Callie? She is dope. I believe she's writing Wonder Woman right now. And that has also been pretty dope. I'm a couple issues behind, but never you mind. What do you mean better than the next Batman? The hell are you talking about? Next Batman was great. What was wrong with it? Um, oh, also, oh, yeah, that's the other thing. On Dark Detective number one, there's also a grifter backup story, which was also great. This, yeah, this whole book. There's two whole stories in here. It's nice and thick. Highly recommend it. This was great. Uh, and Callie mentioned Wonder Woman 1984 variant covers. A lot of the Future State books have variant covers of Wonder Woman 1984. And so that's the Dark Detective variant cover. And another Dark Detective variant cover. Uh, this one is by, I want to say, Jean-Paul Lyon. So that's Dark Detective, and I got a whole, look at that, got a stack of them. Um, I take them out of one box, I got to put them in a different box. I got to find a place to put them. I hated most of the Future State books. The only one I didn't like was Flash. Swamp Thing and Wonder Woman was great. I liked Wonder Woman a lot. I haven't read Swamp Thing yet. All right. Also up is Future State Green Lantern by Thorne and Katie. I don't know. Jeffrey Thorne and, oh, and Tom Rainey. And, ooh, ooh, is this, who's this, who's this lady? Okay, I'm curious. Okay, anyway, Green Lantern, Future State, sorry, with a cover by Clayton Henry, it looks like, I want to say. That's a great cover. Is it by Clayton Henry? Yeah, I think so. I like Clayton Henry very much. And there is the Future State Green Lantern alternate cover by, is this Jamal Campbell? The guy who's doing the Far Sector book. And of course, who knows? Uh, yeah, Jamal Campbell. Did I say that? Jamal Campbell did this beautiful alternate cover. Friggin' look at that. Look at Jamal Campbell's artwork and marvel at it. Ugh. Uh, let's see. Callie says, I haven't read the Wonder Woman Future State book. It's good. But I like the costume design. Same as these. And I like how she's a different Amazonian. She's a different sort of Amazonian. Which you'll see when you read the book. Um... Superman, Harley, Flash, and next Batman were the pits. Oh, I'm sorry, Christopher. Matthew Feldman says, Super State Green, Future State Green Lantern, please. Okay, Matthew. You've convinced me. You've twisted my arm. And now I will, I will add it to your, your bin. Matthew Feldman. You know, I gotta say, uh, to be honest, TBH. I always get real nervous about these um, live streams. And then when I'm here, I have such a good time with you guys. And um, it's just a, a social anxiety, I think, of being on the internet and, I don't know, being nervous about it. But um, thank you for showing up and hanging out with me and commenting. Commenting is the best, because then it gives me something to read and talk somebody to talk to. Uh, Justice League Future State. Oh, another Dan Mora cover. Get out of here, Dan Mora. What are you doing? Why are you so good? Oh, God. I just, there's something really nice and crisp about his style that I really like. Um, I'm curious about this uh, Justice League. Mm, 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 mm. Also featuring Justice League Dark. What? Oh, it's got, all right, it's got Constantine, I'm in. 
It's got my boy Constantine. I'm on Team Constantine. Constantine? Um, I didn't mind the Arkham Knights mini in the next Batman. Harvey as Citizen V basically is kind of fun. Citizen V. Do you mean Marvel's Citizen V from like the Thunderbolts? Is she kind of like that character somehow? Can I get a future state Harley Quinn, says Callie. Uh, issue two. Do you have issue number? Oh, because you have the Wonder Woman variant cover for Harley Quinn number one. You want issue two? Do you want the, I, I assume you want the Wonder Woman cover of Harley number two? Let me add that to my list. Let's see. Future state Harley. Callie. Number two. I'll add that to your subscription. And I will put it up here on my laptop so I don't forget. All right, so Justice League, we did that. And then, ooh, here's the Justice League artist variant cover. And the Wonder Woman 1984 Jim Lee variant cover for a Justice League future state. Uh, I guess she's uh, lassoing onto that lightning, which is kind of cool. And the Wonder Woman variant, of course. I figured. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Harvey Dent as a superhero on Arkham Knight's Pseudo Thunderbolts team. Harvey Dent. Oh, Harvey. I'm sorry, Chris. I read that as Harley, not Harvey. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. You know what I hate? When you have a box of comics and then they're patly, packly, packed tightly and then you take a stack out and then all the books just come cascading forward. I hate it. I hate it so much. All right. And then we've got Kara zor Superwoman Future State, which I don't know what's going on in this book. I have no idea. And that makes me curious. So I'm definitely going to check this out. And this is... um. Uh, by Marguerite Bennett and, um, no, Margaret, Marguerite Bennett and Marguerite Sauvage. Yeah, never mind. The Marguerites. Team Marguerite. And that is the regular cover. And then there is this gorgeous variant cover. Very plain. I'm surprised at how plain this costume is. It's just like there's no emblem or anything. Other than the cut of her dress seems to be emulated. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Okay, this is cool. The, the neckline of her dress, if you look, is the Superman symbol. Right? We got this, and then boop, bada boop. This is, that's the Superman symbol. If you look at it close, that's kind of cool. It doesn't read as well here. That looks like, more like Captain America's shield shape. So, yeah, it's kind of neat. And, oh, I've been watching, uh, on another note, I have been watching Cobra Kai. And we just finished up season two of Cobra Kai. And it really, it, it, it goes back and forth twixt just so, so cheesy and so, so good. It's, it's really a lovely, fun, earnest show. I really like it. And, boy, that season two finale, I did, I did, not, I did not see that coming. Oof. Uh, Peacemaker 12. Oh, Peacemaker 01. Or no. Who's Peacemaker 1? Is he Peacemaker 12 and someone else is Peacemaker 01? Super women? Yes. Yes, Matthew Feldman. Super women. Uh, Robin Eternal. Num future State. And, oh, is this Eddie Barrows? Eddie Barrows is drawing it. Yes. Awesome. Uh, with... Um, Words by Megan Fitzmartin. I want, I, I'm assuming that this is going to be D. 
Damien. Is that Damien? I don't know. It looks like Tim. Tim Drake. But yeah, Robin Eternal. Curious about what that's about. I have no idea. Um, and there's some variant covers. There's this one by... I don't know who this is. It looks almost like Daniel Warren Johnson, but... Oh, it is. It's Daniel Warren Johnson. Important question, says Matthew Feldman. Will I like Cobra Kai if I never saw any of the Karate Kid movies except the one with Hilary Swank? What? What? I mean, maybe, probably. I know a lot. It's, it's a beloved TV show. I know a lot of people are talking about it. And I think that includes people who haven't seen the original Karate Kids. Howsomever, I would say, for your own benefit, go watch the first two Karate Kids. You could probably skip Karate Kid 3. But uh, I, I, I grew up on Karate Kid 1 and 2, and I absolutely love them. And then Karate Kid 3, I completely forgot about, but I did a rewatch because I was enjoying Cobra Kai so much that I think uh, after season one, I went, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go revisit the Karate Kid movies. And I did that. Um, and it definitely makes the experience much better, right? Because basically it's the story of the ongoing feud that started in high school and then went on um, to now. And it's these two grown men who, with children having to deal with the past and they're being, a, you know, sort of hating each other for so long. And it really deals with interesting gray, I want to say gray, gray matter, um, the blurry gray lines between who the good guy is and who the bad guy is. It's really well done character work where you grew up, I grew up hating Johnny from Karate Kid, thinking he was such a piece of shit. And he was, right? But this sort of goes back and explains why he was kind of a piece of shit. And it deals with toxic masculinity and all that sort of stuff. And trying not to pass that on to your child once you recognize it. It's, re it's got some really cheesy stuff in there, but it's doing some really nice work. I, I highly recommend Cobra Kai. And... If you get a chance, I mean, I loved Karate Kid movies, so there's no harm in going back and, and getting that under your belt. Um, I have never seen the Hillary Swank Karate Kid, because when I was when it came out, I was like, that's not Karate Kid. Get out of here. And also, I didn't even realize until much, much later who Hillary like that, that was Hillary Swank. I went, you know, I only knew Hillary Swank after, I guess she won an Oscar for Boys Don't Cry, I think it was called. And then someone, rec you know, someone said that she was a karate kid. And I was like, what? I thought that that was the Pink Power Ranger. I didn't realize that was Hillary Swank. Wait, what was that Daniel Warren Johnson cover? It was Robin. Robin Eternal, Future State. All right, Superman Wonder Woman Future State with a cover by someone who could only be Lee Weeks. Is this Lee Weeks? Who is this? Are you Lee Weeks? Tell me. Lee Weeks, yep. You've got Superman Wonder Woman Future State. The new Man of Steel teams up with the new Amazon Warrior. That's the thing. Well, I'm not going to spoil anything. Never mind. And the variant cover, look like this. Um, let's see. You can skip. Oh, you can't skip three. I, I, I have a feeling three is important in the TV show. But it's not great. It's pretty, pretty rough. Are my comments showing up as Matthew? You just called me Matthew, lol. I'm sorry, Molly. Yeah, uh, sorry. Matthew was the comment directly above you on my list here, and I just messed up. I'm a real piece of shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, man, can you believe that Ralph Macho... He's... Shut up. 
Ralph Macchio is 59? I had, no, I can't believe that. Ralph Macchio is 59 years old. <laughs> Meredith, can you believe it? I can't believe it. Meredith Maybe. can't believe it either. I guess I kind of sense. Maybe. I mean, I guess, I mean, yeah, I'm 42. <laughs> I can't believe he's almost 60 years old. <laughs> All right, so Superman, Wonder Woman. And then, oh, here's the Superman, Wonder Woman variant cover. And then, uh, is this the last one? S Future State Teen Titans. These aren't teens. These aren't teen titans. These are middle-aged titans, right? If it's the future. But I'm, I'm a big Teen Titans fan from way back, so I'm definitely going to read this. Um, also, don't forget to join us this Sunday at 10.30 a.m., and we will be reviewing a bunch of these books that we've gone through today. Here is the Dustin Nguyen variant cover of Teen Titans Future State. Lovely watercolorist, Dustin Nguyen. And the Wonder Woman 1984 variant cover for Future State Teen Titans. So there we go. There we go. Um, oh, I also a couple other things from the diamond box that I forgot to show you. Including some pretty cool keychains or bag clips, whatever you want to call them. Now, I know they're from Justice League. They're from Zack Snyder's Justice League. But whatever, they're pretty cool. Got Wonder Woman. Water colorist. How dare you? He's a water, a water color, a, a water waiter. He's a waiter colorist. Calorist. Flash. Superman. And these are $10 each. Oh, and then the Batman. The Batman. So yeah, these are pretty cool. Whether or not you like the Scott Snyder verse or Zack Snyder verse. Whoops. Who's excited for the Snyder cut? I myself am curious. Oh, my coffee got cold. Cold coffee. Oh, Matthew Feldman says Teen Titans Future State, please. You got it, Matthew Feldman. Writing it down. Matthew Feldman. All right. He is the same age as Mr. Miyagi was in the first movie. Get the. F I'm sorry. I love, love how shocked you are. About this. He's 60 years old. <laughs> He's Mr. Miyagi's age. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, I thought I was. I thought we were the same age, but we're not. Um, all right, no one. What? Why are you saying no one? He, oh, and he is older than his sensei in Karate Kid Three while they were filming. Oh, you're talking about the Cobra, Cobra Kai guy, the douchebag. All right. Is that it? Did I did I get everything, you guys? Um, I think so. Also, my wife went and got more ultrasounds yesterday. It's our final round of ultrasounds before the baby comes, and they did the thing where they um, they do a 3D image of the baby in utero, and I gotta tell you, it is horrifying. I'm trying to find something that even remotely looks like a face. It's just, uh, it's something, uh, this imaging technique. Um, so that's cool. Oh, who is excited for the Snyder Cut? 
Man, there's a lot of there's a lot of Snyder Bros out there who are really stoked about it, and I'm glad for them. I hope they enjoy it as much as they think they're going to enjoy it. Uh, oh, and then here is here's my son's uh, what would you call it profile, the regular ultrasound profile. There he is. Kind of cute, but yeah, the the imaging, the 3D imaging is just goodness gracious. But they're telling us he looks perfect. He's like doing real good. He's got his he's got his little his little hand up in front of his face. That's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. Um, so yeah, sorry. I know no one cares about my baby, but I'm gonna be one of those parents who's like, I have a baby. Look at him. Look at my baby. Mm. Everyone look and care about my baby. You'll never believe what my baby did. He pooped. Can you believe it? Can you believe my pooping baby? Everyone look at it. All right. Speaking of babies, I got to go pick up my cat. Beatrix Kiddo is at the de uh, dentist. He's at the, she's at the vet. And I got to go scoop her up. She's had three teeth removed. For people who've been here the whole time, I'm just repeating things for people who weren't here earlier. That's all. I'm not crazy. Um, all right. Thanks, guys, for hanging out. If you have anything you want me to uh, order for you or to put aside for you, you can email me at jdsherocomplex at gmail.com. And Molly says, nah, your baby looks hella cute. We do care. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, your baby boy. Babies are awesome. Can't wait for the unboxing video. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, Christopher. Uh, you got me. That's a good one. Uh, please take it easy, Mr. JD. Be safe. Have a good one. You too, action figure expert. Bye, Molly. Bye, Chris. Bye, Callie. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, and then... Mo Callie, you should come hang out on Sunday mornings. Even though we probably don't review anything you care about. All right. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get my cat. Love you. Bye.